So the rate hikes are in our past, not in our future. And that means the dollar's going down. And that means the uh, headwind that pushed prices down is now a tailwind that's going to push them back up. In fact, look at oil prices uh, on the week closing above $78, positive on the week, even though stocks and bonds were down. Uh, Bond prices also getting clobbered on the week. So rising long-term interest rates, rising oil prices are a sign of resurgent inflation. Today, we delve into the world of precious metals, particularly gold, and the recent roller coaster it's been on. Renowned economist and financial commentator Peter Skiff offers his expert analysis on the events that unfolded in the gold market this week. For 41 consecutive trading days, gold maintained a remarkable record above the dollar 2000 mark. However, this streak came to an end as gold experienced a sudden drop of $1.30 per ounce on Tuesday, briefly slipping below the $2,000 threshold. Despite this dip, gold managed to climb back above $2,000 later in the week, closing at $2,013 per ounce. The catalyst for Tuesday's drop was the release of a higher-than-expected January Consumer Price Index CPI. This may seem counterintuitive as gold is traditionally considered an inflation hedge. Skiff notes the paradoxical market behavior, where higher inflation numbers have recently led to gold sell-offs, primarily due to the anticipation of a more aggressive stance from the Federal Reserve. Skiff argues that the market's reaction is rooted in the belief that when inflation surpasses expectations, the Fed will have to intensify its efforts to combat inflation. This perceived tightening leads trading algorithms to sell gold and favor the dollar. However, Skiff challenges this conventional wisdom asserting that the Fed has already lost the battle against inflation. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. There was a lot of action in the gold market this week after spending a record 41 consecutive trading days, not calendar days, but trading days above 2000 without trading below it at all. Gold finally plunged below 2000 on Tuesday. It dropped about $30 an ounce, and it was trading at about 1990, a little bit lower. And it stayed at that level on Wednesday as well. But on Thursday, it got back above 2000 and added to those gains today. So it closed the week about $2,013 an ounce. It was actually up about a dollar or two on the week. And I think that this move below 2000 could be the final shakeout for gold before it moves up to new highs. Now, the catalyst for that move on Tuesday was ironically the release of a hotter than expected January CPI number, meaning that the inflation numbers came out higher than the markets had expected. In fact, they probably expected good news. They probably thought that we'd get lower numbers than was expected, and instead it was the reverse. Now, I say it's ironic because gold is an inflation hedge. The point of buying gold is to protect you from inflation. It preserves purchasing power. It's a store of value. So it should be good news that inflation is worse than people expected because that means there's more reasons to buy gold. But the way it's worked for the past year or so is the reverse. It's been higher than expected inflation news that's caused gold to sell off. It's when inflation comes out lower than expected that people want to buy gold. Again, why would that happen? Because it makes no sense fundamentally that that would be the case. Well, the reason is because every time the inflation numbers are higher than expected, the market expects the Fed to have to fight a little bit harder to win the inflation war. And it's that harder fight that gets traders to sell gold. In fact, I don't even think anybody decides to sell. I think it's already programmed into the trading algorithms. Anytime inflation news comes out lower than expected, these algorithms are pre-programmed to sell gold, to buy the dollar because they think it means a tighter Fed, that it's going to be higher for longer, that we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for the first rate cut, and and therefore that means gold's going to have a problem. But the markets still haven't figured out, and I think they will soon, 
that hotter than expected inflation doesn't mean the Fed just has to fight a little harder to win the inflation fight. It actually confirms that it's already lost. The idea that inflation is going to go down to 2% is farcical. There's no way that's going to happen. And I've been pointing that out. Yes, we went down from 9% to 3%, but that doesn't mean we're going to just glide down to 2%. If you look at all the fundamentals, everything points to higher inflation, a resurgent CPI. If you look at all of the uh, factors that should have been influenced by higher interest rates, because the way higher rates are supposed to reduce inflation is by reducing demand. They reduce spending. They make it more expensive to borrow. And so you borrow less, you spend less. But none of that has happened. Government spending is off the charts. Budget deficits are soaring. The U.S. government hasn't tightened its belt because interest rates have gone up. It just keeps borrowing more. And the same thing with consumers. Consumer debt is at an all-time record high. Credit card debt is at an all-time record high. Even though credit card interest rates are at an all-time record high, that hasn't stopped the spending. And so nothing that the Fed has done is going to reduce inflation. The fact that the official rate has come down from 9% to 3% is not really a function of anything the Fed has done. It's simply uh, the way the market has traded. Nothing goes in a straight line. But what really was responsible for the move down was the anticipation of all the rate hikes. That strengthened the dollar. That brought down commodity prices, oil prices, brought down the headline CPI. But all that is in the past. Nobody expects any additional rate hikes, and nor do I. So the rate hikes are in our past, not in our future, and that means the dollar's going down, and that means the uh, headwind that pushed prices down is now a tailwind that's going to push them back up. In fact, look at oil prices uh, on the week closing above $78, positive on the week, even though stocks and bonds were down. Uh, Bond prices also getting clobbered on the week. So rising long-term interest rates, rising oil prices are a sign of resurgent inflation. But so was the CPI number that came out today. In fact, I've been pointing out on my podcasts over the last several months that contrary to the conventional wisdom, inflation isn't heading lower, it's bottoming. It's forming a base and it's about to head back up, which is exactly what we're seeing. The markets just think that this is an aberration. In fact, Fed officials came out on Wednesday and did damage control. Contrary to the Fed's narrative of transitory inflation, Skiff highlights the unsustainable economic fundamentals. Despite the Fed's attempt to control inflation through interest rate hikes, Skiff argues that rising government spending and consumer debt levels are indicating a different reality. He emphasizes that inflation is not on a downward trajectory but is forming a base and is poised to head back up. Skiff points out that the recent rise in oil prices and long-term interest rates, despite stocks and bonds facing challenges, signals a resurgence in inflation. He asserts that the official inflation rate dropping from 9% to 3% was more influenced by the anticipation of rate hikes than any fundamental shift. With rate hikes no longer on the table, the headwind pushing prices down is turning into a tailwind pushing them up. They said that the hotter than expected CPI number uh, doesn't change anything. It's within their expectations and everything is still on track for uh, rate hikes, rate cuts rather, in 2024. Now, if the Fed really was being honest, they would be hiking rates. They wouldn't even be talking about when they're going to cut rates. Rates are still too low. It's obvious because they've had no effect on slowing down borrowing or spending. Meanwhile, you know, if you look at all the economic data, the manufacturing data, that continues to be weak. And so we're producing less and we're spending more. That's a recipe for much higher prices and nothing the Fed has done uh, has, has changed that. But the markets still believe the Fed. They still think the Fed is committed to bringing inflation down to 2%. It's not. It's already surrendered. It's all a pretense that it's going to go back down because the reason the Fed pivoted and stopped hiking rates was because they didn't want the economy to buckle beneath the weight of rising interest rates. It was already starting to happen. 
bond yields were above 5% for the 10 year out to the 30 year and the markets couldn't handle it. The housing market, in fact, we got housing data that came out today that was the weakest, uh, uh, I think since, or the weakest January uh, since the COVID lockdowns. And so the housing market is already having a lot of trouble with rates the way they are. The Fed can't afford to raise them, especially in an election year. So the rate hikes are off the table. But the other thing that the markets have got wrong is their outlook for the economy. They think inflation is going to uh, come down, but the economy is still great. We've avoided recession. They're wrong on that, too. The economy is weakening just as inflation is strengthening. In fact, look at the numbers we got today on retail sales. They plunged uh, far more than expected, down 0.8. They were looking for a drop of just 0.1. But if you look at X vehicles, uh, retail sales plunged 0.6. They were supposed to rise by 0.2. And X vehicles and gasoline, a drop of 0.5 versus expectations of a rise of 0.2. And they even revised down the prior month. Skiff questions the credibility of the Federal Reserve, stating that they are not being honest about their intentions. He argues that if the Fed truly believed inflation was under control, they would be raising rates instead of contemplating rate cuts. Additionally, he notes weak economic data, such as the recent plunge in retail sales, as evidence of a weakening economy. Despite clear signs of economic weakness, Skiff contends that the markets are still buying into the Fed's narrative. He asserts that the Fed's pivot away from rate hikes was not a strategic move, but a response to the economy struggling under rising interest rates. As the markets continue to misunderstand the economic reality, Skiff predicts that gold will soon break free from its recent dip and head towards new highs. And remember, retail sales are not adjusted for inflation. So even though prices are going up, sales are falling. That means volume is really coming down. And, you know, we got more inflation news today, more bad news on inflation. What was interesting is that after an initial sell-off, gold dropped about $10 when we got the hotter-than-expected PPI that came out this morning. Gold bounced back. Um, and the dollar, which initially rallied, again, the dollar does the same thing. When there's hotter than expected inflation, people buy the dollar. Why would you do that? Fundamentally, what inflation means is that the dollar is losing purchasing power. And so if the dollar is losing purchasing power faster than you thought, why would that incentivize you to want to buy the dollar? It's a reason to want to get rid of your dollars. But again, it's the anticipation of higher interest rates that is driving this trade. But the reality is rates aren't going up anymore. In fact, they're gonna come down. Even if the Fed delays the official rate cuts, real interest rates are falling because if rates stay where they are, but inflation goes up, which is what it's doing, that means real interest rates are falling. And real interest rates are far more important for the price of gold than nominal. But looking at the PPI numbers, and this was even worse, than the CPI, and the PPI is a leading indicator of the CPI because generally producer prices rise first and then consumer prices rise later. And so this is more indicative of higher future CPI numbers than the CPI itself. And the uh, monthly number was supposed to be up by 0.1. Instead, it was up by 0.3. The core uh, number was supposed to be up 0.1 and instead it rose by 0.5 that is a big number in fact the beat in core month over month cpi this is the biggest beat meaning the most the core rose above what it was expected expected to rise this is the biggest beat in three years now that doesn't sound like a fed that has succeeded in putting the inflation genie back in the bottle when the numbers are coming out so much hotter than expected.